<laughs> All right. Well, it looks like we are live here on Facebook, so which is fantastic. And we'll go ahead and get going uh, as soon as I get back to the, the big screen here. So with us today, we have uh, a couple of folks here. We have David Ahern and Frank Ford. They are the co uh, the co-founders uh, for Four Day Weekend. And for those of you who have not been to Four Day Weekend before, then uh, you're really missing out. You know, it's a really exciting thing and uh, they do a lot of great, great things with it. And I will say that, you know, typically for some of those uh, folks who've been on these before, uh, you know, we get on, uh, the presenters I get on a little bit before just to check the technology, make sure we're all good. This has been the best, funniest, you know, pre- webinar discussion I've had since I've been doing this. So again, Chris Strayer with the uh, executive director, excuse me, executive vice president with the Forward Chamber of Commerce, welcoming everyone back. With that, I will turn it over to David and Frank uh, and let them give their presentation and it'll be a great one, I know it. And as always, if you have questions, if you're on the Zoom, please feel free to put them in the, the Q&A box there. If you're on, the, on Facebook, then go ahead and put your comments in the Facebook and we'll get those questions answered. With that, David, Frank, take it away. Well, let me oh, just, before we get started, you. Frank, our gift is pre-Zoom meeting calls. That's where we shine the most. Is when <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, we're known for that. We're known for that. <laughs> we're known for that. We Let's, give good Zoom. We give that, good Zoom. That's, that's true. true. Uh, my that's name true. is David Ahern. I'm Frank Ford. And uh, as he was kind enough to mention, we are two of the founding members of Four Day Weekend. For those of you that don't know who we are, we're an improvisational comedy show. Uh, we have two theaters. We have one in downtown Fort Worth, which is our flagship theater in Sundance Square. We also have another theater in Dallas. Uh, in Dallas, And we have, uh, we have had this show for 23 years, completely improvised comedy show. Every single night, uh, we go before an audience. Well, we used to. Now we don't anymore. Uh, now, that, <laughs> now that the pandemic yeah. has hit, Mostly Frank and I stay holed up in our homes uh, <laughs> on video, we but uh, we completely improvise a comedy show and we use audience suggestions. We co-create with the audience and it's completely made up. We do it on the spot every night and people ask us all the time, isn't that terrifying? Isn't that uh, scary? And the truth of the matter is it's not because what we have found in improvisation is that when we all work together, when we all use the tenets and philosophies of improvisation, what we come up with together is far better than what we come up with individually. And so what Frank and I are gonna be talking about today is how can you use these skills in improvisation during these really rather challenging times uh, where a lot of us are having to stay at home, we're doing a lot of meetings via Zoom, and the one thing that each of us would say to you is now more than ever, the skills of adaptability, flexibility, the ability to listen to others, it's going to become more challenging and we need to have more advanced skills than ever so that we can kind of navigate these challenging times. Frank, I'll leave it to you now. Well, it, it, it's interesting. This is a really good topic and I know it's on a lot of people's minds because 40 Weekend has uh, received other requests, uh, you know, for interviews and to talk to people. For instance, I just did uh, an interview with Hannah Davis from uh, WFAA uh, Channel 8 News, and, and she was taking classes right when the pandemic hit at the 40 Weekend Training Center. And so we were on the air and we we're talking about the importance of using improv at this time. So I'll just give you a quick uh, overview for those of you who've never been to an improv show. It's kind of like whose line is it anyway? So every night uh, we get suggestions from the audience and we make up scenes and songs. Now, when a suggestion is given to us in the show, you do not have time to judge it. In, in improvisation, you are flying by the seat of your pants. Things are happening now. So improv teaches you to be present and also to yes and whatever the suggestion is, right? So we don't judge it. Somebody yells out cow. We don't say, ah, we had cow last show. Let's get something up. No, nope. it's cow. We're going to take cow and we're going to Yes, that's the yes part of yes end. And one of the philosophies that we're gonna be talking about, the cornerstone of all good improvisation is yes end. So accepting the idea is yes, and then the end part, A and D, is building on it, okay? So why is that important? Well, in our world, there are no right or wrong answers. There are only higher 
and lower percentage choices. And the reason we give ourselves a little wiggle room there is because we have found that the lowest percentage choices, what seemed to be the lowest percentage choices at the beginning of something, uh, when yes ended, not dismissed, when yes ended, turned out to be a really great, innovative, out of left field, out of the box idea that we would have never thought of otherwise. And uh, that has helped our business immensely. So what is going on now with COVID-19? This is an unprecedented thing that we're going through right now, a global pandemic that has shut down the country and the world. Now, this is the time for us to not travel the roads most traveled. We, we're looking for the out of left field, out of the box ideas at this time together to figure out how we're gonna get through this. And so the yes in philosophy teaches you that. Uh, very quickly, the other things that you have to incorporate into a show uh, uh, is active listening. That's also very important. Do you wanna be a great improviser? Do you wanna be a, a better uh, uh, communicator? Be a better listener. Active listening, key. What Ahern had just mentioned, teamwork, collaboration, key to good improv. What we come up with together is far better than anything we could come up with individually. Uh, and then also adaptability and versatility. Hey, look at this. This pandemic, the ground is shifting below everybody's feet right now in a way that it never had. You talk about versatility and adaptability. We have to be very versatile and adapt to all of this, the new, the new, new. And finally, last but least, improv also teaches you uh, how to have a sense of play. And here's the thing. We found that this worked on stage extremely well. But these principles and philosophies also work just as well off stage for our business, for our interpersonal relationships with coworkers, friends, and family. And those things that I was talking about, the low percentage choices, we don't call anything a mistake. What we call them are happy accidents. Nice. And that was the title of our, our book, yeah. Uh, it all led to us writing this book, which became a national bestseller. And it talks about the transformative power of yes and at work and in life. But if you look at life through the lens of improv as a happy accident versus a mistake or a speed bump or an obstacle, then you're going to find the silver lining in, in, in all of that. And, and that this is what is really, I think, coming together um, through improvisation the way, the way we use it. Uh, it is vital to this. And one last thing, I know you're thinking, but I'm not an improviser. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. We are all improvisers, okay? We are, Ahern and, David Ahern and I are improvisers by trade, says it on our business cards, but you, are, you don't script your day. You don't script your conversation. We're not scripting any of this now. You improvise every single day. So what we're gonna talk about is, since you're already improvising, why not use the tools that professional improvisers use on stage and off to make your improvisation in life even better? Right. And, you know, and, and uh, I agree with Frank 100%, not just because we're business partners and we talk the same. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so what, what, what is this philosophy? Well, what we do in improvisation is we strike the word no from our vocabulary because what we found is the word no gives you the illusion of control, but what it does is it stops all possibilities. So what you're doing is because you want the control of illusion and you say the word no, um, it's become our reflex because we've been conditioned to say the word no, sometimes without even really thinking about why we're saying it. And the truth of the matter is, is that people have a fundamental fear of saying yes, because the moment you say yes to something, there's going to be change because something new is going to come out of yes that you've never experienced before. Frank makes a really interesting point is that what's going on right now with this global pandemic, um, obviously this is very, very challenging, but as everyone knows from great challenges come incredible opportunities, but you have to shift your mind in a way to where you start looking for those opportunities. I'm going to give you an example of what I meant. So, uh, by all accounts, our business is, uh, I mean, it's under great stress and great challenges right now because we rely on the public to come to our theater. You know, every single night, 215 people come to the theater to see the show and that doesn't happen anymore. So what did we do? 
immediately we had to think, okay, we've got to figure out uh, an improvisational way to continue with our business where the main commodity of our business, human beings and people are not allowed to come. So what we did, and another thing about improvisation that always fascinates me, and I know Frank agrees with this, is that improv is all about service and it's about service to others. Like my job is to make Frank look good. It's and Frank it's my job to make David look good. And if we both make each other look good, four day weekend looks good. So we come under this stress and we have all these things going on and all of a sudden, what is the silver lining to all this? And we thought, how can we help? What can we do with our talent and our skills to go help? And what we realized was a lot of the people in the service industries were especially affected by this uh, pandemic. Uh, waiters, wait waitresses, bartenders, uh, you know, anyone in the service industry uh, who relied on money day in, day out had it just taken away from them. So what we said we would do is we figured out a way to use Facebook Live and we went and did a live show with no people in it because we had to have less than 10 people in the theater at any time. And we went live to do a show. And what we asked for the people watching is if you have even a dollar, just one dollar, donate it. And we are going to take all the money and we're going to donate it to all the service industry people in Sundance Square and Lower Greenville, which supported the two theaters around us. Why did we do that? Because we understood that those are the people that make our show successful. When they tell people who are at their tables, come see this show, it's great. And we, when we had this uh, initial feeling of fear come up, our instincts was, how, how can we serve other people? Our goal was to raise $5,000. We raised $15,000. Now we didn't, we don't deserve the pat on the back for that. The people who gave us the $15,000 were forever grateful for those opportunities to get to do that. So these are yes and solutions to challenges that come up that shift the way you're thinking. Like, how can I be of service to people? And so honestly, Frank and I come to everyone watching today asking, yeah, all of us are uncertain right now. But when we start to shift our lens to that new way of looking at things, there are beautiful things that are starting to arise from this. And if you notice, people are starting to help each other out. Frank mentioned earlier, I don't know if it was on the pre-call or in this call, but he talked about how in New York City, people are walking around and they're starting to hear the birds. We're noticing that pollution is starting to go down. So yes, there are challenges coming, but with these challenges are great opportunities for us to positively impact the world. Now, another yes and thing we did was we realized we have the capability to create content and we're, we have the ability to do it very quickly. And Streams and Valleys in Fort Worth needed some, uh, some public uh, service announcements to let people know how to properly use the trails around Fort Worth. And initially they were like, you know, we don't have a whole lot of money in the budget. And we said, we don't care because we're here to help serve the community. And we said, we will go out and we're going to shoot these. And we got all of our manpower together to help create these really, really funny videos for streams and valleys, because we want to do our part to help the community throughout all of this. These are all yes and ideas. This is not, this is taking uh, this situation and saying, yes, this is happening. And we are going to do acts of service to help the people around us. And this is the kind of thing that all of us can do to inspire the people who are in our field. Because we are, we are the change that we seek. We're the ones right now who can make the greatest impact by using the tenets and philosophies of improvisation, service, saying yes to those around us. You know, another thing improvisation is about is when someone's down, you reach down, you give them a helping hand and you lift them up. In improvisation, we're like a forklift. We will come down to where people are, we will meet them at their level, and then we'll pick them up and elevate them. Because at various points, Frank is my forklift. When I'm down, he lifts me up. When he's down, I lift him up. And that's the attitude that we most want to convey to everyone, is take that improvisational attitude and, and take it out into the world and be that improviser that's offering hope to people and the inspiration to people because Everybody is scared. So we need some calming influences that say, 
we're all going to be okay because we're all going to band together. And there are certain things that Frank and I could illustrate for you. And maybe we will try a couple of yes and things. We'll see if it can work. But, you might, yeah. but a lot of this is, is about talking more about the philosophy of improvisation, the philosophy of service, and how we can uh, help each other. And then the last thing, and then I'll, I'll turn it back over to Frank, is that, okay, so now we're not doing shows and we're, not, we're you know, we have a lot of time on our hands. What I did personally was I thought, what can I do to create, uh, to, help, to continue to, you know, fulfill my desires of creation. And then this time off, I actually finished writing a book uh, called We'll Always Have Paris, a book I'd been planning to write for a few years, but I kept putting it off and putting it off. Well, the universe just went, poop. you know what? Here's two months. What are you going to do with your time? And so I took that time and I'm grateful for it. I'm not, I'm not worrying about what's going to happen. I have absolute faith that as long as we all continue to do our work, we're going to come out of this and we're all going to be stronger and better for it. Yeah. And, and you know, that, that's a great example what David just mentioned about uh, the happy accident for him that came out of all of this, the silver lining for him uh, being able to write the book for other people it might be, reconnecting with people that you didn't really have time to connect with because we're all so busy and we're all on that that wheel and, you know in the rat race kind of going 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 we don't have time this was a, a time to reconnect with a lot of people and things and nature and what have you so uh you know that is a silver lining or happy accident out of all this and to build on what david was saying you know uh, when we were asked to do those PSAs, public service announcements for the COVID-19 stuff, uh, they turned out great. What was really great was we, we have weekly calls. And when everybody was on there, you know, there wasn't a, a, a no but person in the group. You know, we, we, were, we were given this challenge, uh, you know, to somehow use humor to get a very, very important message across. And it was so great when you have everybody around you on your team, yes, ending stuff, right? Um, well, the, the PSAs turned out really well. Uh, and what was the happy accident that came from that? Well, uh, you, NBC Channel 5 was promoting them each week. They still are every week. When we roll out the next one, they promote it. Well, all of a sudden, Dallas was interested in this. And so we were able to take what we had, plus shoot a couple of other original ones, and so that Dallas could get these public service announcements out there. Uh, we just now, uh, I believe this week, there, there, there's a call with Cincinnati, Ohio, uh, is interested in using uh, their Parks and Recreation Department, are interested in taking these videos and, and using them to get the word out uh, to, to, the, to their good folks in their city. So that is, we did not anticipate that. We didn't think, oh gosh, other cities might need this or use this, but it was a happy accident to have done that and now be able to give it out to all those different cities to help them with their messaging uh, to, to their citizens. Uh, that live in there. And so, you know, and that's the thing, what, what Dave's mentioning is everybody knows this. You've always heard that uh, about the laws of attraction, right? So it's 100% true, okay? Y you know, when you practice this philosophy and yes, and when you live your life in a positive way, you start to shed uh, the negativity. You put, the negativity sort of just kind of drops off, goes away. And before you know it, over time, your circle, your immediate circle, is full of only yes and people. The things that can be accomplished with a group like that around you, that supports you, the fear of the unknown, honestly, just like on stage, you know, it's scary. In improv, we don't know where we're going. I mean, we don't know what the audience is gonna suggest. Well, I, Dave doesn't know what I'm going to say. I, I don't know how he's going to respond and, and so on. So it's a big, giant mystery of where the scene, the show, all of it is going. Just like life. We don't know where we're going. But the thing about being around a group of people that practice this, yes, is that 
you, you were willing to step forward into the unknown because you know there's support there. No one is gonna trip you up or make you look silly. That's why it's important to practice this because you build trust with everybody. And if you start, if that trust starts to start here in a small circle and then get big and then, whoa, and then bigger here and that, well, now all of a sudden, you know, where we started here in, you know, Texas and Fort Worth, here, this little circle, maybe the ripple effect would be, you know, the United States and then, oh, look, the world, you know, so, so we're all stepping globally, nationally, regionally, locally into the unknown together and, and practicing this thing not only is a positive way to go about finding solutions and creating happy accidents, uh, but, it, but it's also just a healthier way for everybody to sort of collaborate and, and work together. Right, and here's the thing, and so in, in a uh, very practical way, this is how Yes And works, and, and Frank was mentioning uh, our, our phone call, because it was right after, we always have uh, obviously our weekly phone call where we kind of get, get the 411 of what's going on with everything, and when it came time to do these PSAs, what he mentioned was everybody was very yes and. What does that mean, practically speaking? So we've got to come up with ideas for these PSAs, and they need them within a week. Now, anyone who knows anything about film production uh, or, or creating campaigns, generally it takes months to do these things. We had six, seven days tops. What does that teach you? We don't have time to say no. No is only going to slow us down. So what we do is we apply yes and. So that means anyone on the phone call is allowed to say any idea they have, because we have nothing when we're starting. So it starts with wonder if, um, wonder if Arnold Schwarzenegger is uh, the Terminator or the Terminator. It, it started out the Terminator and it's like, oh yes, that's a great idea. You know what? And uh, you know what? And he's not called the Terminator, he's called the Terminator. <laughs> there you go. And so what happens is, in, in yes and, and in improvisation, whatever the first idea is, you're not allowed to change it. All you're allowed to do is listen to it and then build on the pertinent information and add your piece of the puzzle to it. So it starts out as uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is the Terminator and someone yes ands it and makes it the Germinator. So now we have the Germinator, which is, and what is the Germinator gonna do to knock out, and, and yes, we know COVID-19, not a germ, we know. <laughs> we know it's a yeah. this is comedy, you cannot, uh, so. We get it, it's a virus, that we right. understand. We, we got it, we nothing got it. Rhymes with, nothing rhymes with virus. That's, that's right. right, that's right. Except Miley Cyrus, and we can't do that. We'll so, so on these calls, when we say, do you mind if I yes and that, we all go, absolutely, because I know that if I have an idea, Frank's not gonna try to change my idea. He's gonna make my idea better. What does that teach us? What we come up with together is far better than what we come up with individually. Am I creative? Yeah, to a degree. Am I more creative when he has his creativity to it? Absolutely. Am I grateful that I don't have to do all the work and I know that he's gonna take his piece of the puzzle? Absolutely. Because it takes a lot of pressure off that if I have 10, 12, 15 people on a call, to pitch these ideas, I'm only responsible for one fifteenth of the entire whole. And then I can give my very best. Now, what he was saying is, is that in our world, there are no wrong ideas. There are no bad ideas because when you start to say wrong or bad, you're judging it. What we realize is that if somebody happens to make what we call a low percentage choice, meaning that, yeah, they offered something and they, they're a human being and it, it didn't seem like it was like whatever your judgment is about it, if you just take that, hey, they're doing their best and they threw this out, what would happen? What if what they just said was a great idea? And we have found, we come up with the most out of the box ideas that turn out to be like, never even thought of that. And that's why we call our book Happy Accidents because we chronicle in our book all the times where somebody could have said, that's a terrible idea. And it, and it literally, and you're going to find this hard to believe, a yes and literally took us to the halls of Congress and meeting yeah. the president where we did a keynote yeah. address because of an idea that seemed like, 
That would yeah. never work. Not only did it work, it became the best idea ever. So what we ask you to take away is that you start to bring yes in, not only to your work life, but how about your home life too? When you, we start to celebrate the ideas of those around us, we say yes to our spouse, we say yes to our coworkers, and we build on their ideas, and we treat them like artists and poets, because everyone in our field, they all have our best interests at heart. Our loved ones do, even the people we work with, really want us to do well. No matter what our story is in our head, we all wanna help each other succeed. So it's a matter of honoring the ideas of others and making their ideas great and even better and celebrating them because what, guess what happens in turn, they do the same for us. And that's how we take this yes and philosophy in these challenging times, which we all agree they're challenging, but guess what? We all know that. We've all had the conversations about how challenging it is. Let's all be the people that say, from great challenges, great opportunities arise and let us be the, the people looking at the opportunity that's in front of us. And, and I know that we can all do it. Otherwise you wouldn't be sitting here watching it. Um, right. Yeah. And that's kind of yeah. yes and in a nutshell. It is. Yeah. That's, and, and, and listen, what he's talking about, it's, you know, that all comes from, with, especially within four day and each other, honoring other people's perspectives because they're experts in something you're not. They know stuff that you don't. Uh, so what you do is, you know, you surround yourself with people that, uh, you know, complement your weaknesses, right? And as a group, that's why you are so much stronger. So before we wrap this up here, or bring it in for a landing, uh, why don't we do an example of us? And we'll, we'll, we're, we're going to go through uh, an exercise, the exercise of yes and. It's very, very simple. And since this is being recorded, if you don't get it all this time, rewind the tape, go back, watch it, practice it. But it's very, very simple. Um, we're going to explain how it works. And you can do this with your spouse, uh, your family, your coworkers, friends, and as an exercise. And, and the reason that it's important to do this exercise often, probably daily, uh, we have, what it does is, is that right now, there's a lot of negativity uh, out there, right? A lot of no but, a lot of no, a lot of yes but, a lot of negativity. So it's going to take some time for you to, you know, practice this exercise to start to recalibrate, retrain your brain. So the default is yes and, versus no but, okay? So we'll go through a simple example here and then try this out. Try this out with family and friends and coworkers and you will see over a month or two or six months, if you do it, if you practice it, you will notice a change in your attitude and your outlook and your perspective on life. And you're gonna start to attract other people that are like-minded into your circle. So uh, do you kind of want to go through this, explain what it is? So here, here's how this is going to work. Frank is going to start with any declarative statement. It doesn't matter what it is. He's going to, to make a statement. My job is to listen to what he says, and I'm going to say yes to whatever he said, and I'm going to repeat it to let him know I heard what you said. And my job is to build on the pertinent information of what he says without changing the idea. And if you'll notice, when Frank and I do this, we're going to use the pronoun I and we. We're not going to say you. Because if I say you, it's his idea, or if he did it to me, it'd be my idea. This is two minds thinking as one. This is two creative minds, and so I say I, and Frank says we, I, we, so this is our idea. And our job is to not deny anything anybody says. It's to fully embrace it, and it's really kind of a what if thing. So it's a what if scenario. Frank's gonna say a statement, and in my mind, I'm always thinking, what if this were true? Which it is true because he just said it. And so I'm going to build on that with my, and because this is true, this is what happens. So, Frank, you can start. All right. Um, I had wheat toast for breakfast today. Yes. And because I had wheat toast for breakfast today, I had so much energy, I went skateboarding in the park. Yes. And because I went skateboarding in the park, I came across a, a beautiful pond that I had never noticed before 
Yes, and because I came upon this beautiful pond that I'd never noticed before, a duck came up and sidled right next to my leg. Yes, and because this duck sidled up right next to my leg and allowed me to pet it, I realized that I had the powers of a duck whisperer. Yes, and because I had the power of a duck whisperer, I started learning all of Daffy Duck's most intimate secrets. Yes, and when I learned all of Daffy Duck's most intimate secrets, I got uh, a portal into the world of Looney Tunes that no one else was privy to, and I got to find out all of the likes and dislikes and peccadillos of the Looney Tunes characters. Yes, and because I went into the world of Looney Tunes, Mel Blanc was there, and he allowed me to do one of the voices for a new character called Flippo the Dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and when I was doing the voice of Flippo the Dolphin, it became one of the most popular Looney Tune characters and spun off to create its own franchise. Yes, and because it went to spin off, to create its own franchise, it said, duh, 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 duh. that's all, folks. <laughs> 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 Everybody folks, <laughs> <not now. laughs> Yeah, in comedy, that's a closer. You can't talk. <laughs> all because you had some wheat toast. That's it. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> oh, my goodness. That, that's fantastic, you know, and I, I will put a, a you know, pitch in for this. So the chamber did do a team building exercise uh, with these folks uh, a few months ago, and it was. it was. It was really interesting to do this and do this with your coworkers and, and start to you know, see where their minds go in some of these things. It really creates some great conversations, some lasting memories going back to the office and talking about it in the future. So we did have one question come through here, and you, you talked about this a little bit, but we, you talked about it as a person, but what, do you have some suggestions for working with people uh, whose first instinct is no? So you talked about yourself and changing your mind there, but what about if you have some of those coworkers, some of those people, how do you reach out to them? How do you get them to, uh, adopt that yes and kind of mentality. You know, you know, I'm going to turn this over to David Ahern. We had this question asked to us at the IMEX conference in Las Vegas. Do you remember, Dave? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Remind me. There, there was a gentleman there who had, uh, he, his boss was a very negative person. Right. Um, so this is a subordinate and his boss is a no person. And he said, how can I uh, use this with him. Um, and, you know, there are going to be negative people in your life uh, that will just, you know, <laughs> they'll be contrarian, they'll criticize things with, with no follow-up. Um, the byproduct eventually will be uh, that those people will start to move out of your circle, you, you know, and, and, and sometimes it may be a change of venue environment or a job for you if, if, if a certain environment is too toxic. Now, having said that, um, I, I think you always, you, you can yes and uh, with negative people um, and, and come to some kind of a, a progression or, or forward movement. You know, even in these exercises, um, when somebody says, no, or, you know, shut something down. There's always a workaround. You, you will find it by yes ending something, there is always a workaround that kind of keeps things moving forward at, 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 at all times. And another, um, uh, Frank, another thing we always talk about when, because we get this question a lot, um, ultimately you always want more people who are in kind of the yes and mentality. And if you do yeah. have more people who are saying yes to things, it can definitely neutralize the people who say no, because when, and even if you're in a one-on-one -on -one situation, if somebody's really negative and you continue to be positive and say yes to things and building on things, their behavior starts to become apparent to them. They start to become aware of their own negativity because our nature as human beings is to be empathetic and compassionate to other human beings. Everything that has happened in our life where we are negative or tearing things down is conditioned behavior. It's not who we truly are. So even if you have somebody who's really negative, 
when you start to constantly meet them with love and compassion and kindness and you say yes to their ideas and you try to build on their ideas over time they start to realize oh it's me i'm the negative person because we always run into negative people the one the other thing i want to say is is that if somebody is negative to you all the time and you're saying and they're saying no all the time they have some need that they're not having met you know they're because they're constantly having to say no and it's like what is it in so what need do you have that's not being met what can we do to help you fulfill whatever needs not because you're constantly saying no to ideas so what is it that you're looking for because there, there's always some underlying reason for somebody who's that negative all the time and i do believe that if you can continue to be positive uh as frank said they're either going to come along with you or you or they are going to fade away because vibrationally not to get overly metaphysical if the vibrations aren't in alignment you're you're going to find you're going to go separate ways it's just the way it is and yeah. And if somebody is really negative and they move out of your life, it's probably better anyway. And it's, it's not in any place of judgment for them. They're just in a different place than you are. But don't let someone else's negativity drag you down. Because that's a really easy thing to do is say, well, I wasn't negative, but this person did it. Don't allow them to do it. Don't allow them to rain on your parade. Continue to be positive. Continue to find yes and solutions to things. And as Frank says, you're going to attract to those people into your life. And there are going to be people that are going to move out of your life. And that's okay because we're just in different places. So it's, it's all part of the journey. And, and David is bringing up a, a really important point. You know, when you're around a negative person or somebody cuts you off in traffic or, you know, it, you, you don't know what kind of a day they've had. You, you don't know what kind of a life they have. It's, so you don't know that. So being compassionate is always the higher percentage choice. And, and what, what Dave is talking about, and, and I'll go back to what I said earlier, you know, this time has been a mandatory press pause on our busy lifestyle to take stock of what's really important. So yes, you reconnect with family and, and friends, uh, your spouse, your children, nature, God, whatever, okay? You're reconnecting. But also, it's an opportunity for us to reconnect with our humanity. And as Dave mentioned, humans have this unbelievable capacity for empathy and to help each other out. And, 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 and that's really what we're connecting reconnecting with i think a lot of people are uh look no and negativity is who we are a lot of the time but that's all like dave said that is all learned behavior yes and is who we want to be that's that's who we want to be right and that fortunately is the way that we're hardwired that's who yeah. we really are totally so, not I would even build on that, Frank, by saying that when you're saying yes and to people, you're coming from a heart-centered consciousness. Yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. saying no to people, you're coming from an egoic base of you want your ego and your personality to win out. And the thing is, is that when you're moving from that heart-centered, compassionate place and, you're, and you are in that yes and thing, that's when the universe starts to align for you. So if somebody is in that space, that, that intellectual no space, it's really not your job to change them, but just understand that the whole point of improvisation is to go from ego, which is all about me and my thoughts, to we go, which is all about what can we accomplish together. And if you find somebody that is overwhelmingly negative all the time, don't judge them for it, but allow them to go on their way because it's not our job to change them, but it's also not our job to allow them to drag us down. And what our job is, is to be yes and people that elevate and inspire the people around us. And we have the capacity to do it. And if someone else isn't in that space, maybe one day they will. You know, maybe they're just, as Frank said, maybe they're having a bad day, a bad section of their life, or we don't know, but, but don't let that drag you down. Just continue forward with, with your positive mindset. So, so I guess in the final analysis, our challenge to you out there 
is this. If a group of guys who started an improv show in Fort Worth in 1997 could yes end their way through a series of happy accidents all the way to the halls of Congress and the President of the United States, then what can we, all of us, together, yes end our way to? I can't even imagine what good things are in store for us with that kind of collaboration. So, yeah, we want to thank the chamber for having us. It's an yeah, honor. Thank you very much. I think I can speak for Frank when I say we are thrilled to do things like this because uh, we have we have a servant's heart, and uh, and and by having servants' hearts, we're all going to be better off for it. So, thank you to the chamber for having us on. Yeah, thank you so much. No, thank you. thank you for coming on. I knew this would be a great session and we'd have a lot of fun and we certainly did. So we had uh, the one question there, but we also had a lot of thank yous and one person has said, take my money. So we'll see <laughs> you in contact with whoever that person is. No, no, hey, we'll take anyone's money. We don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said before, you know, if, or if you're uh, you know, a leader of your organization or just a uh, you know, employee and doing team building exercises, this is a lot of fun and this is something you should look into uh, because it is uh, something that really gets the, the mind turning there. So gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll wrap it up here because I know the, the governor uh, got on about 10 minutes ago and I know it's a couple okay. people dropped off. So, uh, but uh, for everyone else who's still still tuned in out there, uh, so this will be the only Facebook Live and, and Zoom webinar we'll be doing this week. We had Senator Cruz lined up for tomorrow, but pesky Congress decided they wanted to have some committee meetings this week. So, uh, so he had to cancel, but we'll be certainly bringing him back on. Uh, so we'll be doing that, but we will still have the online office hours on Friday. But this week's topic is about the 2020 workplace. So as we look at our office spaces and we look at our, you know, our workplaces of the future, what does that look like? And so I look forward to having a lot of uh, good discussion with you uh, on those online office hours and kind of hearing your ideas and how you see your office spaces uh, looking in the future. So with that, again, gentlemen, thank you very much and have a great rest of the day. Yeah, appreciate uh, it. You have a great rest of the day as well. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.